By the way, um, isn't it rational to observe different racial groups on average are more prone to having certain traits, attributes like intelligent athleticism? In very narrow contexts, like athleticism, you know, if I'm looking for a long distance runner, then I'm not going to go to blacks, because I know lots of blacks who are not very good long distance runners. But I'm going to go to Kenya, or to, was Kenya, Uganda? I think it's Kenya and Uganda. And for whatever reason, and a bunch of reasons, both biological and in terms of training and in terms of altitude, that makes runners from Kenya and Uganda really, really good. But if you, if you want a runner, um, who, who, then you don't go to other parts. I don't know, to Ghana. Oh, I, you know, I don't even know, right? South Africa. So, no, it's not that helpful. What you need is that if you're really looking for somebody with particular traits, like going to be a good basketball player, then you analyze those traits and you look throughout the world where those traits are and you go to the place where those traits are. But you don't just examine the entire group because the entire group has much more variation in that group. They have a lot of variation, therefore it's unuseful. Why would you ever want to focus on a group's intelligence, whatever the hell that means, on the average group's intelligence. It's meaningless. It is useless. Even if you had a good measure of intelligence, which I don't think we have, and I've talked about IQ, I don't think it's a good measure of intelligence, and a lot of people don't think it's a good measure of intelligence, and go read what Nassim Taleb has to say about IQ tests. But even if you look, even if you had a good measure, why would group averages matter to you? They wouldn't, because what you're looking for is, assuming you're looking for intelligent people, you're looking for the exceptional, you're looking for somebody really, really smart. And there could be any racial group, because again, the variation among groups, however you define the groups, is far smaller than the variation among individuals. So the real question is, how do I identify individuals who are really, really smart? And race has nothing to do with that, zero to do with that. I mean, because if you use the racial, racial averages, then you would never catch the Walter Williams or the Thomas Souls. Right? And if you used averages, I know a lot of really, really, really dumb Ashkenazi Jews. But on average, they're the smartest people on the planet, supposedly. But I know a lot of them who are really, really dumb. And I know non sephardic Jews that are much smarter than Ashkenazi Jews. No, I'm sorry, non-Ashkenazi Jews, Sephardic Jews, who are much smarter than Ashkenazi Jews, but on average, they're less smart. So who cares? What relevance does that have? Are you going to decide who to date based on the average? Are you going to decide who to marry based on average? You can decide who to hire based on average. You can decide who to employ. Are you going to decide who to, I don't know, hang out with based on averages? That's racism. That is racism. Stephen Molyneux argues that the level of civilization is related to population IQ. Jared Diamond, uh, Guns, Germs, and Steel seems to have the rebuttal to that idea. What do you think? I mean, I think, I think uh, uh, Stephen Molyneux is wrong. Uh, I think Stephen Molyneux is, is a racist and an anti-Semite. I mean, if, if, if that were true and since Ashkenazi Jews have the highest IQ, they would have the highest level of civilization. And that's not being true and never being true. Uh, it may be in the Old Testament times, but not since then. And I, I haven't read Jared uh, uh, Diamond's rebuttal, but I'm sure he's a better source than Stephen, Stephen Molyneux, who I don't consider a source for anything. And I really encourage you not only to stop listening to him, but to uh, unsubscribe to his channel and to take away any, any sanction you might be giving him because he is a bad, bad person and you should not be affiliating with such a person. Um, but... There's just no basis for that. Civilization is a consequence of ideas. And I don't think Jared Diamond knows this either. So Jared Diamond is wrong in guns, germs, and steel. They're all wrong. All these historians are wrong. Because the fundamental driver of human history is ideas. And how ideas spread through cultures and where they come in and how they come in. That's a fascinating topic. But that is not related to IQ, that is related to, to a bunch of characteristics that certain cultures have. So for example, if you look at the Middle East today, if you look at Arab populations, you would say, and I know that people who rebut this as well, but you would say, well, they can never have a civilization because they're Arabs and they have a low IQ supposedly. But yet, 
from 900, around 900 to around 1500, at least in Spain, the Moors, who are black, by the way, um, had the highest civilization of the time. You know, the Chinese, the Eastern Asians, who have, according to the IQ tests, again, have very high IQs, have had civilization, but also been very good at destroying civilization. And the West has way outstripped them, including in countries that, on average, have lower IQs than China. It's just bullshit. China's problems have to do with the fact that they never had an Aristotle. They never had a real reality-based metaphysics and epistemology. They never had the idea and therefore never embraced reason. And therefore, their ability to go from civilization and keep advancing was limited, was capped. Not IQ. It was the lack of a great philosopher. And that's historical accident to a large extent. And, and maybe there are causes why Greece, why good things happen in Greece. But they don't have to do with IQ. They have to do with, I mean, there are a number of different theories about this. And, and I'm not an expert in either one of them. But they have to do with the particular nature of Greek society at the time. And, and people, who, people maybe who, who, who invaded Greek. But again, do we know what the IQ of the Greeks were? I mean, this obsession with IQ is just, I mean, let me be very clear, and this pisses me off. The obsession with IQ is nothing more than a disguise for racism in the guise of science. But this is what the Nazis did. The Nazis studied, you know, studied the, the, the biology of human beings, and there was a, the whole eugenics movement. This was scientific. The idea of differences between races on a scientific basis was the eugenics movements in the United States in the early 20th century that then bled into, you know, that influenced to some extent the Nazis of the 30s and 40s. And that's what it leads to, and it leads to nothing else. And IQ is just another derivative of the eugenics movement in the way it's being used today. And it's, I mean, in my view, it's disgusting. You don't group people like that. You want to study culture and intelligence. Sure, because I think there's a feedback mechanism there. But to study race in any way is worse than useless. It is a foil for racism and a disguise ultimately for racism. And even if people are doing it innocently, they will become tools of the racists, which you're seeing right now. I'm sure... I don't think Charles Murray is necessarily a racist. But the bell curve has been used significantly by racists and will continue to be used. So, I mean, I, Stephen Molyneux is, is despicable. And again, civilization, history is driven by ideas. ideas. I, does anybody know what the race of Thomas Aquinas was? Are Italians have a particular IQ on average for Italians. Does that reflect on Thomas Aquinas, on his IQ? I mean, he was a genius, but is that because he's Italian? Are they geniuses of other races who might have discovered Aristotle's work and done what Thomas Aquinas did? With? I mean, that whole line of reasoning is pathetic and non-intellectual and denies, denies free will and denies, you know, what you make of yourself. And denies individual ability. Thomas Aquinas is Thomas Aquinas. Who cares if he's Italian, white, gray, green, blue, yellow? And the people who picked it up were not Ashkenazi Jews, the smartest people in the world, supposedly. The people who picked it up were Italian monks and Spanish monks who then were called the scholastics and studied the stuff. And later on, it was picked up in Northern Europe and battles within Europe about these ideas and and, and really, really, you know, people like Michelangelo. Does Michelangelo come from any kind of genetic stock that's particularly good? I mean, I want to talk about Michelangelo when we talk about Florence, because I think Michelangelo's story is a fascinating one. And, and one wonders, you know, what happens to Michelangelo's of today. But, I mean, no, this whole way of thinking, this whole way of, excuse me, this whole way of non-thinking, it's, it's a way to eliminate thinking. It's a way to, to disguise cause and effect. 
And it's in a way, in the end, just to embellish and to promote xenophobia, racism, nationalism, collectivism, all the different forms of collectivism. And all collectivism is evil. All collectivism is bad. There are no forms of collectivism that are good. There's no collectivism at the right, that's good. Collectivism at the left, that's evil. No, they're all evil. All right, here's another IQ question. I'm also skeptical about IQ. A healthy person with low IQ scores is not the same as a brain damaged person. High IQ, not the same as a genius who makes great art or science. I think that's absolutely right. Intelligence is a far more complex question. And of course, it's what you do. Well, let's say there is such a thing as raw intelligence, and I'm not even sure what that is, but let's assume that there is. Some people have bigger brains, more dense brains than other people. But then what? What do you do with it? I, as I've said, I think, before, I know a lot of really high IQ people who are really, really stupid. Really, really dumb. They don't know what to do with their high IQ. Or they use it for bad purposes that leads to failure in their own life. And I know people with low IQ, you could say, low tools, who've made amazing lives for themselves, who outshine everybody, who work hard, you know, who just are better at something, some aspect of, of using their minds. And what does it mean to use your mind? Some people are very good at some aspects and not very good at others. I know people who are brilliant at math and can't do anything else. I know people who are lousy at math, but have this amazing ability to integrate information and to think philosophically. And I know people who are good at math and good at integrating. I, you know, I know people who are fantastic at spatial relationships or who are amazing artists. You know. Does Roger Federer have a high IQ? I mean, to be a, 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 an athlete at that level, you have to have a, a kind of intelligence that's rare. I don't know if that's manifest in IQ or not. But it's a kind of intelligence. It's an application of an intelligence to a particular thing. To, to, you know, to, to, to managing your body in a particular way, to monitoring your body and being able to correct mistakes to, and to handle stress and a million other things. But is that measured by one number, IQ, all those skills, the artistic skill, the athletic skill, the, 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 the mathematics skill, the, the scientific skill, the historical skill, the philosophical skill? I mean, that to me is absurd and irrelevant. Who cares? I don't know what my IQ is. And I don't really care. I have no interest. I mean, there are people who think I'm pretty smart and the people who think I'm the dumbest person on the planet. What difference does it make? I, you know, I'm pretty, I, I'm pretty, I, I impress myself often with uh, certain aspects of my intelligence and then other days I go, oh my God, how could I be that stupid? And not. Brute force is the only avenue of action open to men who regard themselves as mindless aggregates of chemicals. Just as there is no such thing as a collective or racial mind, so there is no such thing as a collective or racial achievement. There are only individual minds and individual achievements, and a culture is not the anonymous product of undifferentiated masses, but the sum of the intellectual achievements of individual men. Even if it were proved, which it is not, that the incidence of men of potentially superior brain power is greater among the members of certain races than among the members of others, it would still tell us nothing about any given individual, and it would be irrelevant to one's judgment of him. A genius is a genius, regardless of the number of morons who belong to the same race. And a moron is a moron, regardless of the number of geniuses who share his racial origin. The question of whether one alleges the superiority or the inferiority of any given race is irrelevant. Racism has only one psychological root the racist's sense of his own inferiority. Like every other form of collectivism, racism is a quest for the unearned. It is a quest for automatic knowledge, for an automatic evaluation of men's characters that bypasses the responsibility of exercising rational or moral judgment, and above all, a quest for an automatic self-esteem or pseudo-self-esteem.